Okay, well, hi there, guys. Um, we're here to talk a little bit about um, uh, what we did in our company with, um, with the Fabric and Composer. And um, maybe quickly start with an introduction of, uh, of our company. We're called Four Eyes. We are uh, 10 people, very motivated, but only when fed. But our CEO is too cheap to sponsor snacks. So this is why, ideally, um, we had to come up with a blockchain solution, because that's the obvious choice. Um, we have uh, our company exists for more than 12 years. And uh, therefore, we have been doing other things than blockchain, obviously. And we love to develop uh, elegant solutions for challenging tasks. And we are always looking for interesting to projects where we can work on. But back to this uh, case, we wanted to have a, a blockchain-based uh, system we use in production and on a daily basis just to get the experience on, on running a project uh, um, and implementing a project going further than just the tutorials, which are mostly well written and usually work, but um, there are some challenges which you have, which you only learn when you try to do an end-to-end -end project. And so the uh, the issue with the, with the snacks was like an online snack shop, so you have to pay to set up a balance. And then you can order your snacks, and we forced the apprentice to go and get them in the morning. <laughs> now, after the delivery, it will automatically deduct uh, your order from your balance. And yeah, as I said, we don't trust our CEO, so we had to make a blockchain-based system, because otherwise he would just tamper with the data and update his balance. And uh, we had a very limited time frame to actually implement that. And uh, we used the uh, um, composer to do that. And we'll show you quickly, uh, Walid will show you how you set up. We have actually, I, I should show you the workshop and how we uh, set, uh, set it up. But we cannot do this, unfortunately, because of the Beamer. It doesn't work anyway. Um, so we had a problem with uh, login, key handling. Um, first of all, uh, hello everybody, my name is Walid. Um, so the problem, we, we use this, uh, this project based on Fabric and Composer, and we had the problem with, uh, with uh, authentication, so is that, that every user uh, which can use this shop can uh, log, log, be logged in um, from everywhere, so from the smartphone, from the web browser, and so on. And, uh, you need, uh, if you use a blockchain solution, you, ha you will have your, your private and public key, and the browser cannot deal with that. So we, Composer team has uh, used uh, the wallet workaround, which is centralized. As a, it's a, it's a, a solution which is like a workaround for me, because you go from a decentralized way to centralized way again. Um, so I will show you how it's actually work. So this is how, how our, our uh, login service works. Can you give me the presenter, please? Thank you. So first of all, you go to the website. <clears throat> then you, uh, there's a login button where you can click to log in. Then you can send a request to the, the REST server, which is generated by the hybrid ledger composer tool. And then the REST server is, in, yeah, is uh, working using a multi-user uh, mode and authentication mode. So it needs to go to the wallet. It's a Mongo database um, a container, Docker container, and look for, the, uh, for a card for this user. And if it doesn't find any card, it redirects the user to a login service, which you can um, choose by yourself. It, it can be GitHub, it can be uh, Google, it can be Facebook, whatever. And then you can, after that, get, add your or put your GitHub credentials or uh, uh, Google credential, and you will get um, an access token from GitHub or Google. Then the REST server will according to this access token, we'll take a look here and see if you have any card uh, uh, saved on, this, on the wallet 
and connect it to this access token of your, of, of your account. And if it doesn't find any, you will be redirected to the upload card from our application, and then you can upload your card. The card, you get the card from the admin of the network who create as a participant and generate or issue identity for you. And Composer do uh, like uh, a card file which has the connection profile, the connection information of the network, and the public and private key. And then you upload the card. The card will be uploaded on the wallet, and then you will be redirected to the home, um, to, the, to your dashboard of the, of the application. Then um, if you log in again, you don't need to upload the card because the card is already here. You just look at the, at the wallet and see your, and uh, compare the wallet with the access token which comes from the login service, and that's it, and you are logged in. This is a workaround, but I don't like this solution because when I present this solution to anyone, he said, ah, oh, but this is centralized. And that's why I say, okay, I know this is centralized, but this is the only solution which we have now. And in the future, maybe we can um, replace the CA with uh, Indy, if it, if it works, I don't know. Um, I hope it works. Otherwise, um, this, this is, uh, everyone should have his own, sol uh, his own card or his, or his own identity on his own wallet. And the, the web, web browser need to um, handle the, web, the certificate and private and public key. Maybe there is some plugins in the future. Um, now you see the, the whole, how the login works, but you didn't see the application. I cannot set it up on, on my machine because my terminal is very bad right now. But I can see you, I can show you the live system. Of, because this product is, is live and production, we use it internally. So I'm going to show you just the live system. Um, so I'm just going to write snooney for eyes. So yeah, snooney means, um, snooney means snacks. <laughs> so this is a time between uh, breakfast and lunch. And I wanted exactly to sit the, ex the same project on local my, in my, on my machine and show you how we um, automated the whole uh, setting up of the network of Fabric and creating the, the whole containers and composer and deploying the chain code and so on. But unfortunately, we, don't have, a pro we have a problem with, uh, with, uh, with the colors. So basically, it's in German, but we can, I think we can use Google Translate here. Cool. Uh, so we have, we have some products like that. We have users. So here special is, is when I create a user, I just, when I create a user here, I just create a participant. But this participant doesn't have an, an identity. It doesn't have a card. So I'll, I had some ideas how to uh, solve this problem, how to make it automatically. But the problem was I, I, I said, OK, I just I can't send after generating the ish as um, the identity, I can send the user um, the card per mail, which is not a good idea because it, it should be encoded or encrypted. Um, then I just create the participant and I go to the terminal manually and create a card for this participant and just give the, 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 the person this card per USB or it's it's internal project, so it's it's no it's, it's no problem to send the card in a, in our chat system or whatever. Yeah, but this is uh, still an issue where we don't have like a good solution how to actually get the keys yes. to the users because yeah, like obviously sending them per mail is not a very smart idea. So there must be some way when you generate this kind. How do you get that that in a larger system? How do you get the keys to the users? Exactly and. Then we wanted to show uh, the people or the, the customers uh, the benefits of a blockchain. So we created, for example, the transactions uh, site where you can see all the transactions which, which we uh, executed from the beginning where we um, uh, launched this application live system. And you can see everything. Um, uh, someone made a finished shopping and you can see, even see the, the, the transaction record. Um, and also we have, for the products, you can see the, 
the history of an asset. For example, you can see here when this asset created, and you can see, because this was a translation. So you can see the, the, the record of the creation of the asset, and you can see the update. So another, another user made an update for this, for, this, uh, for this asset. You can see the record here, and you can see the difference. And the difference is it was, it, ha it had no price, and it has another name. Now it has a new price and a new name. Um, and for us as a developer, this is something which you don't need to implement by ourselves. This is in blockchain itself. You just need to query it. You don't need to, to write a, a script or a function to, to, uh, ha to update or to, to log the updates or to, or to log any, any events because you have this on your, on your machine or, or on, on your blockchain. Um, and let's see what, what, what every, every employee in, uh, at Four Eyes do, do at the morning. He go on the site. He'd like to have any, anything. I'd like to make, to have a Mongo. I love Mongo. And I'm, I'm going to do an order. So I'm, I'm executing a transaction right now. So I have an order. And for example, Marcus can go from his, from his account and, and order anything else. And you can see here is a, is a shopping list. And this is my own orders. And after getting the, um, after uh, buying these products, we just settle the, the shopping list. Or we can reset it if we didn't buy these products. Now I don't need to lose two francs from my account, so I'm gonna just receive the shopping list because two francs are very important for my balance. I have only five. Um, yeah, it's, it's, it's very, um, from the front end, it's very simple, but in the back end, there is 15 Docker containers are working here. Um, we have two peers. Um, one organization with two peers. We have one order. The order is uh, working using Kafka consensus. Um, we have the CA, Certificate Authority. Um, we have the Mongo database as a wallet and the REST uh, server as an as a ABI to interact with the network. Um, to, to set this up on your, on your, own, um, on your own machine, we, we made it as a as an open source, you just go to uh, GitHub and write four eyes, because you can do this on your own, because we cannot, we cannot show you how to work with that. So it's really easy to, to do. Just go to the snack shop, and then just follow the readme. All what you need is Docker and Git, curl, and NBM Node.js. Because everything is within Docker, uh, um, only the, the front end is not a Docker container. I mean, Composer, I, I use Composer as a Docker container. I use a REST API as a Docker container. Everything is, in, everything is doc, doc, Dockerized. dockerized. Um, yeah, I wanted to follow this readme and show you how to, to set this project local. And it's, the whole network or the whole infrastructure can be for production or for development. You will be asked if you would like to use it for a development or production. Because if you use it for production, you will have another password, you will have um, another stuff to do, and if you use it for the development, it will be uh, much simpler uh, than for um, production. Um, and it's very, very, the fabric network is very flexible. You can change everything you want without looking to the configuration itself. And um, let me go back to the presentation to show you some challenge, um, again, the challenges we, we had. For example, we had the problem was, uh, the problem was um, after launching the, the, the application, I had to make some modification, then I lost all the data I created on the life system. That was because I didn't, um, how should I say, I didn't, take a look at the container and what, what could happen uh, when the container crashed or, or anything, what, what was going on with the data and so on. But I, I, I tried to, um, to find a solution for that. And, and if you follow the readme and just 
let's say you create the whole application and it works and you would like to delete all the containers it will and create them again it will work everything as as it was and you will no, not lose any any data because i created a, a co command called recreate so you can recreate the containers again and just mount the the, the old data which you had on your network uh, again i said uh, we wanted to make the blockchain uh, visible so we wanted to see the, um, to, to show you how the, the, the history of an asset, and I wanted to, uh, to make a pa bank statement for every user. So I wanted to, 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 um, to have something, but this is like in the future, I, ca I didn't have time to, to implement it. Um, we wanted to show the people or to the user how, uh, it's like as a, its own bank statement, how many balance he got and how many balance he, he lose and so on. Um, yeah, that's it. And I feel bad because I didn't show you uh, how to work with that, but yeah. So for the future, uh, payment is very important because uh, now for the payment, we, we just have like, I am the admin, so uh, Marcus is not an admin on this, on this system. He just come to me <laughs> and tell me, hey, here, 20 francs, okay, I, I take the 20 francs from him and go to his user and say, okay, yeah, I'm gonna give you um, 20 francs and, and that's it. But I, now he need to trust me. So I can, instead of 20, I can just say 10, which is not good. So we, wouldn't, we want to, to have um, a payment system where he can pay by himself and he don't need to come to me. Um, um, this could be in the future. I, I hear that, that uh, f the new version of Fabric will uh, provide or support tokens, so maybe we can do it with that, or with another platform, <laughs> if Fabric doesn't do that. So. Okay. <laughs> yeah, we will come later to that. Uh, yeah. We, we will come later to that for, because we have the problem that Compose is not going to be, to, it's not going to be supported anymore, so we will show you uh, some prototypes without Composer. Um, so the other, uh, the second step is hyperledger in the instead of certificate authority component. I don't know if, this, if, if we can do that, but maybe, because uh, the vision of hyperledger is to make the different frameworks compatible with, with each other. So maybe it, it, it works. Now, unfortunately, Composer is not going to be supported anymore, which makes me sad. Because I love, so I love Composer. It makes everything very, very easy, and you don't need to write a lot of code, and yes. Um, so we had some, uh, yeah, we wanted to, to, to know how, how, can we work, how can we work with Fabric without Composer, and we need to learn the low level, let's say, of Fabric. So we had some challenges. So for example, the data modeling um, is a problem where in Composer you can use a concerto languages, language and you can just uh, uh, create your, your, your data model. Um, and you don't need to, 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 to take care about how to add a participant or an asset and so on. The Composer does all of this stuff for you. And the transaction flow, we don't need to take care about uh, how a transaction can be proposed and how, can, how it can be sent to the order and back to the peers and so on. You don't need to think about that when you use Composer. You just need to write the lo logic for the transaction itself, what the transaction should actually do, do and not anything more. Um, yeah, we want to use an ABI or a REST server. Queries, um, how to uh, use the queries uh, direct with Fabric without Composer, and the access, um, the ACL, how do you call it? Access language, access, access, control. access control language, yes. And uh, this is a very good, uh, this is a file where you can define who can do what when you use Composer. You can, you can really, uh, you can also do this, I think, uh, using Fabric, but not exactly the same, the easiest way, like Composer. Um, so now, let's, sh first challenge was an, was, was an ABI. So we, I tried to uh, create an, 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 an 
small prototype with a very, very bad front end because I'm not a front end developer, so I'm sorry for that. Um, and I will just show you this will work because I, I, I did it, I, I prepared it for you. I hope it works because it's, uh, you cannot trust the technology anymore. Um, so, no, this is not the right one. This is for you. Okay. So, let's say, imagine you have this beautiful Swiss pocket knife. And you would like to send this knife. It can be anything. It, it can be another product. It, I just talk this because we are in Switzerland. Um, and you would like to send this uh, knife around the world. And you would like to track this knife. Uh, this knife belongs to me. Now I would like to give it to Marcus. And Marcus gave it to another one from another country and so on. Um, and using a QR code, we can uh, scan this knife and save the date of, the ni of this knife on the fabric network. And then um, we can change the ownership of, the, of, this, of, this, um, of this knife. So let's try to uh, scan a QR code, which is not on the knife. It's on, uh, on my phone. So let's assume that this is the knife. And so let's scan it. Then, now this proje project is without Composer, OK? to make it clear for you. We don't use Composer here. Um, now I can, I can just say uh, that I can register the owner of the, of the knife. So let's say I'm from Egypt. My language is Arabic. My email is test. Um, now, what I'm going to do is, is, is to create an asset or register an asset. This is like a, we are going to um, execute a transaction. So just take a look here behind what's going on. Now, what we did here is we made a transaction proposal, and the transaction proposal was OK. Then we send it again to the order to put it in a block, and then the block will be sent to the peers. Um, it's very simple, I know. Now, if we take a look at products, um, you will see here the, 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 the JSON object. <laughs> um, I didn't have time to implement a good front end for this project. I'm sorry. I had, no, I had no one day, only one day. So you can see the, the model and the email is test, uh, first name or lead, et cetera. Now we can change the owner. And we need to, um, I need to uh, say, when I want to change, when I create this asset, I get a key, private key, uh, a key for, for, for as an as a owner of this knife. And when I want to change the owner, I need to use this key to change the owner. So this is another QR code. Why it doesn't work? Hmm. What? Yeah, exactly. It doesn't matter. You will. You can scan it again, and it will just change the owner. And you will do a, a new, a new. Um, you will have a new owner for this knife. And the the second feature is to have a, like a, a map. And you can see where this uh, knife was on the, on the map. Like in, it was in Egypt, now, now it's, it's, it's in, in Switzerland, and so on. And this was like to, for me to learn how to work with Fabric without Composer uh, using an API. OK. What do we have here now? I think this is your turn, Marcus. Yeah, a second project we did um, when we tried to, to get like from Composer to Fabric is uh, an energy certificate trading platform we did uh, at the Energy Hackathon. 
and um, uh, yeah, there we had the same issues with the modeling, which we already took from, from this case. And uh, we implemented the transaction flow again, also from this case. Uh, but now uh, we need to do, uh, add the option of querying and also um, uh, to get the data out in, in the format we want. And I can quickly demonstrate this, uh, this prototype for you. Yes, this has better front end. Yeah, don't <laughs> promise anything. We have not seen it on this screen yet. So, okay. yeah, great. Yes. So, yeah, great. So, you've already created the seller. Yeah, okay. I created everyone. So, uh, this is the idea is basically that you, if you have like a PV installation on your house and you don't need the energy and you sell it back to the grid, this will be a moment when you could. Uh, sell an energy certificate at this point, and this is, is based on uh, on a use case by a local utility in Switzerland. And so our um, our setup simulates uh, that your smart meter, once he sells energy back to the grid, automatically generates these certificates. Um, you as a user just have to say like a price, a minimum price you want for the certificate and here we can like simulate the uh, smart meter transactions. So in the last 15 minutes he has exported 10 kilowatt hours of, of energy and this creates um, this, creates this uh, certificate. What now happens is it looks on the market, is there somebody willing to buy this certificate at least? Uh, with this price, and we see some. Uh, we see this here. Uh, from the bio side, it's it's quite the th same thing. So if you want to have like real uh, proper uh, power in your house, you can have your smart meter buy these certificates automat automatically. It works the same. You set a maximum price you're willing to pay, and your smart meter imported. Let's say five kilowatts of, uh, kilowatt hours in the last 15 minutes, and so he looks uh, and makes a matching between the prices. And um, to show you a little bit how this works, we can start a simulation of of the smart meters generating certificates and buying certificates. Doesn't work. Oh, maybe not. But yeah. you can you can see yeah, it's it here. the same thing. Um, so uh, then you can make uh, a lot of like. Uh, interpretation of this data, so uh, how many bits were there, what were the prices, and these kind of things. And this is also based simply on fabric. Yeah. Um, what do we have? Yes, we, w we wanted to show you how, what is the difference when you use composer and when you use fabric. I don't say fabric is bad, I love, I work on fabric, but just, I'm just not happy because Composer is not going to be. Uh, so uh, here, you just is, this is from the playground. It's, it's a simple transaction. And you, as you see, you just implement what the transaction need to do. You, just need, you don't need to do any other stuff like uh, to send the proposal and so on. And this is, this is something which is make it very, very easy for us as a developer to work with and to make something quickly. And then, if you would like to see how a transaction works or how to work with a transaction in Fabric, let me show it to you in the, in the editor itself. Let's go to the energy certificate blockchain and then, for example, the, let me do it here, it's better. And then go to to victory chain and invoke.js. Then you can see here, um, yeah, I, I need to do everything. You can't do this in your own library and so on, I know that, but you need to see how, you need to, to get the user, the identity of the user, and then you need to make a transaction proposal, and then you need to call the function for that from the chain code. Then you, after, after the transaction proposal was good, you will send it um, to the order and put it in a block and you can, yeah, this is all the, the whole transaction flow. If you don't use Combo, uh, Composer, you need to take care of all of this stuff. Of, uh, all of this stuff. So Yeah, and uh, I'm very happy to hear about uh, the Fabric 1.4 where lots, uh, lots of improvements in regards to, to having, a, having an easy 
possibility to create smart contracts or this kind of business logic uh, will be improved. We did not have time to look at yet at the release candidate, which was just released, but hopefully it will uh, help um, you and us as well to, to um, avoid this kind of many lines of code which, which are highly redundant uh, in itself. Yes. So, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. As I said, we're always looking for interesting projects to work on um, and we've put uh, all the code from all the three prototypes you'll find on GitHub. We also put the slides on the Shed uh, yeah. website so you can download them. Um, and feel free to contact us if you have any questions. Most of the projects except those I was heavily involved are very good documented by Valid. Uh, so you should be able to follow the README and have the system set up on your on your uh, setup. Yes. Yeah, and so yeah, let's discuss. Um, we have five minutes. <laughs> what would you? Thank you. Uh, have you got the exactly uh, comparison between the implementation in Composer and implementation in the Fabric? No, it's not a one-to-one -one comparison. Um, we um, we we did this like complete uh, application with with the shop we showed you, so we can uh, we can really compare about uh, of the difficulties. Even though these uh, prototypes we show you with Fabric, they they've taken some shortcuts. So there there will if you if you want to have them production ready, you will be needing lots of more codes to handle things like login, ACL, and these kind of topics. And validation. Yes. Yeah, that was my question. Do you have an example of um, the ACL rules in Composer and how that would translate into the uh, access control <laughs> in Fabric? So for access control, we didn't have um, the time to um, implement any prototype for that. But um, this is, as I said, the next challenge for me to uh, find out how to, uh, to do it with Fabric uh, without Composer. and. Uh, we we did only for ABI on for data modeling, and what what yeah. else? And the transaction the query, flow itself, yeah, the, query. uh, the queries, uh, ACL is n not not yet. For, for I don't have a prototype for that. Yeah, the one project we're working on for a customer, we're still uh, in process of like defining the business process and the ACL rule in general, but not specifically in a technical setup. But uh, uh, we will post that on our blog. Um, this comparison. Yep. Hi, I had a question regarding the historical traceability on Fabric. Um, from my understanding, um, to um, out of the box, Fabric does allow you to have access to like level DB or couch DB to see what's on the current state of the ledger. How do you generate a history on a certain unit um, on Fabric? Um, because I think you have to use some kind of composite key functions to generate what has happened in the past. Um, so have you guys had experience with that? So I think this is a, uh, we did this was compo well, when we, when oh. we show the history of a product, right? Yeah, well with Composer uh, you saw it, but uh, we did not, um, we did not uh, do the actual one-to-one uh, -one comparison there again uh, with Fabric yet. Um, because, yeah, because we just recently started this like experiments with Fabric to, to get a feeling uh, to be able to provide the, the customer with, with a really high quality product in the end. I know this one. <laughs> Hi. Hi. <laughs> so my question to you is like, so with your implementation of the uh, Fabric, you use Composer, but is it like all in one channel? Because I could not figure out if you ah. can make channels in Composer. Yeah, um, in this use case, you don't need to have different channels. So if you have a fabric network, you have to have, you should have a channel, one channel at minimum, and all, all the beers you have are in this channel. But um, there's other, some use, uh, other use case where you have different channels with different peers and uh, these peers which are in these, cha in these channels and, and not in other channels. But all these uh, prototypes and the, the snack shop is one, only one channel. 
to my understanding, in Fabric, uh, in the Composer, you can deploy the same chain code to different uh, channels, but the, the chain codes cannot interact with each other. But I'm happy to be corrected if that statement is wrong. To, um, I, um, this project was a snack, I, I, and, and Nicole, I did this, um, the whole uh, setting up of this, of this project, and there's some people who, show, who saw that. I think Paul, you saw this, right? <laughs> Hi. Um, so just feel comfortable and follow the readme and it will work. I'm, I, I wanted actually to, to read it from the readme and show it to you, but we have, uh, unfortunately, and um, the problem with the colors. Any other questions or any other tips? Yes? Yeah, I'm, I'm on it. I'm, I'm on, oh, on it to deploy Kubernetes, uh, Kubernetes uh, instead of Docker. I mean, to, for, it's, it's better for production. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm on it, yes. But I don't, I don't have anything for now to show to you, but we can talk later and show you what we did. I, I've deployed, oops, that, that's quite loud. I've deployed the uh, uh, Fabric on Kubernetes so we can all have a chat if you cool. guys want and I'm doing a workshop on yeah. Friday and Saturday. Cool. Yeah, that's great, that's what we're here for, to like exchange experience, that's great. I have a question about uh, the I have a question about uh, uh, disaster recovery strategy. Uh, if the node goes down, uh, because you mentioned that uh, you have a script with uh, uh, who can pick up all the database, yeah, and uh, all the persistent data, which exists. Uh, so basically, what what uh, what I do um, on this uh, network on this project, the snack shop, I when I create the, the container, I just mount the the folder where the data are stored. So when, when, the, when the container crashed, you still have the data. You can just recreate the container again, and it will just take the data from, from the, the local uh, data on your system. So, and we, may, we do uh, regularly uh, backups. Yeah. yeah. Like on an hourly basis or something like that. Any questions? Well then, thank you for your patience and uh, we're always open for discussion and input and we still have a lot to learn and we're always happy to share and to learn from you guys. Thank you.